You guys ready for another one take video? So today I want to talk to you all about a first world audiophile problem. So here you are. You saved up for a set of speakers and you know you want to enjoy a full range listening experience. You don't want just good mid range or treble. No, you want really good bass to go with that. I mean, you want it all. But the big problem is that you know there are two general ways to achieve this solution. You can either take your money and use it to buy a set of big dedicated towers or you could take the same money and use it to purchase a set of compact speakers that are augmented with a pair of subwoofers. Both have their pros and cons. So the big question is, what should you do? Which is going to result in the best performance for your money? So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to attempt to go over all the many variables that play into making this decision. But because there's so much to go over, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by giving you my conclusion first, and then I'm going to talk about how I arrived to this conclusion. So if I were in that position, here's what I would do. Based off of my years of experience, I've come to find that the key to unlocking the answer to this question involves disregarding the subwoofers entirely. Because here's the bottom line. A good set of subwoofers is going to complement and elevate the performance of just about any system. So focus your money on the set of dedicated speakers that make you the happiest, to check off all the boxes that you care about. Midrange, treble, imaging, dynamics, Go with something that matches your tastes, your lifestyle, and something that's going to make you happy for a very long time. You can always add bass later. So now I'm going to explain how I arrived to this conclusion. And I think the best place to begin is to first summarize the major differences between bookshelf speakers and their floor standing counterparts. That way you guys can use this information to help make a decision that's best for you. So first, on the topic of bookshelf speakers, there's going to be a lot of advantages as well as quite a few disadvantages. So when it comes to the advantage of a small speaker, number one, you're going to notice that small speakers do a great job of laying down a huge soundstage. Now, why is that? It's because when you look at the front of most bookshelf speakers, there's almost no baffle area to speak of. There's nothing extending down to the floor. It's just the drivers, the parts that produce the sound that you're listening to. So when you have that kind of a thing going on, you're going to get very wide imaging on a very consistent basis. Next, let's talk about the overall coherency and purity of the sound. This is something that a lot of people like about monitors because they feel like it's more coherent than their floor standing counterparts, at least up until a point. And this is because most bookshelf speakers are very simple in design. In fact, the majority of them out in the marketplace today are two-way monitors, a tweeter, a woofer, tied together with a very simple crossover. And it's a lot easier to make a good sounding two-way monitor than it is to make a multi-driver floor standing speaker. Now, of course, there's also going to be bookshelf speakers that are larger and more complex. But for the sake of simplicity, let's just stick with it being easier to produce a good sounding monitor. And then you're going to have cabinet rigidity. So when you're looking at a product line and you notice that there's a bookshelf speaker as well as a floor standing speaker, you may also notice that they're made of the same exact materials. And this can be a problem with a larger speaker because now the cabinet is going to resonate more, it's going to contribute more to the presentation, whereas it's not going to be quite as dramatic with a bookshelf speaker because it's smaller. There's less going on, the cabinet's going to be more proportionally rigid, and that means it's going to be a little bit more inert. And then next, because bookshelf speakers don't produce as much sound, they're actually going to be a little easier to work with in a real world environment. They tend to work better near wall boundaries and overall they're just going to be a little bit easier to work with. But there are going to be some disadvantages as well starting with their inability to produce a lot of sound. They're not going to always be the best choice for somebody who likes to listen at loud volumes. If you're a bass hound, most small speakers aren't really going to have a whole lot of bass. They're not going to have that same dynamic range and that density, that sense of scale that a bigger speaker is going to have. On top of that, they're not going to be as efficient as a bigger speaker, meaning that you need a more powerful amplifier to safely drive a bookshelf speaker than you would a floor standing speaker. Still though, there are going to be many advantages, but some of those disadvantages are a deal killer for a lot of people. So now let's shift gears and talk about floor standing loudspeakers. So there's going to be a lot of advantages there. 
the primary advantage is going to be common sense. A big speaker is going to produce more sound than a smaller speaker. And this is due to raw physics. When it comes to making sound, if you want more of it, then you need more radiating surface area and you need that speaker to move more air. So when you add more drivers, radiating surface area, and you put them in a bigger cabinet, which is going to allow more air to go in and out of the speaker, you're going to get a bigger presentation. And the net result is bigger dynamic range, a bigger sense of scale, a lot more bass in terms of extension and heft. There's also going to be some other advantages. As I mentioned earlier, floor standing speakers are more power sensitive, so you don't need a whole lot of power to drive a lot of floor standing speakers. On top of that, you're actually going to have one advantage when it comes to imaging. While bookshelf speakers are great at laying down a horizontal soundstage, floor standing loudspeakers are better with giving you a sense of vertical dispersion. So there's going to be a little bit more of a realistic sense of scale, not just in terms of sound, but how it projects its sound stage out into the room. Now, if you like to listen at louder volumes, a floor standing speaker is going to be the obvious choice, but there's going to be some distinct disadvantages with floor standers as well. Number one, you're going to notice that floor standing speakers, they produce a full sound and if you put them in a small room or if they activate some funky room node in your room, say in the upper bass or lower mid range, there's not a whole lot you can do about that outside of using EQ. And then on top of that, driver coherency, especially if you're buying something under $3,000, usually isn't going to be as good as a monitor speaker because it's just a lot harder to get a tweeter, a mid-range driver, and many different bass drivers or woofers that are dedicated to lower frequencies to integrate together seamlessly, especially when you have more baffle area to deal with. So it's always going to be pros and cons, and that leads me full circle to this discussion. What's the best way to go? Should I get a bookshelf speaker and then augment its main weakness, which is bass output, with a pair of subwoofers, which quite frankly you're probably going to dig harder or dig deeper and hit harder than a set of dedicated towers, or should I just go with the dedicated towers? Well, it's not always an easy, easy thing to decide. God, I'm losing my words here. You see, here's the problem. If somebody's in a small room and they tell me that, hey, I want to control base output and I value the things that a monitor can do, then yeah, you know what, in a small space, go for it. That's going to be a very good solution for you. Or if you're somebody who's in a larger room and you say, I like to listen at loud volumes. I like a big dynamic sound. I want something that can replicate the sensation of a live musical event specifically within the mid-range. You know what? A set of floor standing speakers are probably going to be best for you. But the problem is, even with that example, there are exceptions to the rule. There are plenty of people out there who have big speakers in a small room and they love the sound. I'm a good example of that. I know of people who have a big room, they like to listen loud, they like that full presentation, and they are perfectly happy with their little monitor speakers with a subwoofer. There are so many ways to go that it's nearly impossible for someone like myself to say exactly what's going to make you happy. And that's why I feel like it's easy to get caught up with information paralysis. You just consider it over and over and over again until you just, you never make a move. The bottom line is this, you have to learn by trying. And that means taking a leap, making the most educated guess as to what you think is going to be best for you and then going with it. But I've learned that ultimately it's best to just focus on the main speakers that you want and then worry about the bass later. If that means having to save up a little bit more money to get it, you know what, so be it. Because if you're spending that much cash anyways, go ahead and get what you want. Anyways, guys, that's going to be my take on the subject, my one take on the subject, meaning I'm sure I left out lots of crucial information that you guys are going to remind me of in the comment section. But hopefully you guys took something positive away from this video. As always, I appreciate you watching. And until next time, peace outros. They're my weakness. They're my kryptonite. Eh.